Welcome my friends to today's tutorial where we will be looking at how to send data between the front end and back end systems in your application. We're going to be looking at an example using Node.js and so without further ado let's dive into it. So we're going to start off in a project directory and we're just going to make a folder whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it James and we're going to cd into James. <coughs> now in here for this project we're going to init a basic package.json file for a node.js application and to set up our server we're just going to say npm install if I can spell that right install express and that's what we're going to need for our server today so while that installs and once it's done, we're also going to need one other dependency, and this one's going to be a developer dependency. So you have to add the save dev, dev tags for Nodemon. Let that install. And while that's happening, just a bit of background information. So front end to back end communication and vice versa is what happens all the time. The front end system is what you experience and interact with on your desktop, and the back end system is typically a server. So in this particular instance, if I open this project up, code, we're going to make a server that serves an HTML file. It sends an HTML, HTML file from the back end to the front end, and that's what the user is going to see on their page. From there, they're going to learn how to send information from the front end and receive that at the back end, and that's where you could save it to a database or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this happens constantly. Uh, so every time you go to Google, you send a request from your front end to Google's server, their back end, and they respond with an HTML page. And then when you interact with that HTML page, you send information to their server, and then they respond back accordingly. So let's start defining uh, some our Express server. So we're going to say const Express is equal to require Express, not events. Uh, and then we're just going to say const app is equal to uh, express, and you call that as a function. And the last thing we're going to need is a port. So port is equal to 8384, 8383. And then <coughs> since servers listen to requests from anyone's front end, we have to tell our server to listen on a particular port. And we're just going to give it a function saying console.log uh, server has started on port and pass it in the port. So that's going to let us know that our server has started. And so we can start this server <coughs> by adding our package.json command in here, dev, and just say nodemon server.js, uh, add a comma after that. And then when we come down here and say npm run develop, our server will start up on port 8383. Perfect. So now that our server has started on port 8383, we can actually come into a file. So if I just bring across a tab here, and let's say we go to localhost 8383, we will get absolutely nothing. But the moral of the story is that our <coughs> server will have received that request. It just doesn't know what to do with it because it doesn't have any routes. It doesn't have any instructions once that front end request to the back end gets there. So let's actually define some routes. So we're just going to say app.get. And in here, it's going to be the route is going to be the home address. We take a request and a response. Open that up into a special function. And in here, we can just say res.status200 to let them know that their request was successful. And we can send, uh, let's just send back some HTML for the second that says hi. And so once again, <clears throat> now when we run this, we get high back. Our front end sends a request to the back end, and our back end sends information to the front end via this command. Now in this particular example, we're going to use two things. So the first one is going to be using some middleware. So we're going to say app.use, and we're going to say express.static, and we're going to give it the public folder. So that's just going to say, if we make a folder in here, Anything in here can be used in this particular document. We can serve it up. 
to the front-end application. And so in particular, we're going to send over an index.html file. And if I just make an HTML file, this is actually going to be default sent every time someone comes to this get route. So their front-end will send a request to our home address, and they will get back our James HTML file. And so in our HTML file, we're just going to have two things. We're going to have two buttons. Uh, this one's going to have an ID of uh, get for a, a get request. Uh, we'll close that. We're going to copy that and we're going to have a post button. Uh, and we're also just going to have an input type equals text. And we're going to give this an ID of uh, input. And we'll close that. And we're going to wrap this all in a form. So enter that down. So now we're going to have a little form that when users come to our page, they will be able to see. So if we bring that back and refresh it, we have a form and we have two buttons that don't have any content inside them. And so if I just move this over so we can see this over here. So <coughs> how this is going to work is that these two buttons, so we're going to have a get button and a post button to look at how to post information. We're going to have an application so that whatever the user types in here can get posted from the front end to our back end. And when we click get, we're going to send a request to ask for information from the back end to the front end. And for that, we're actually going to have to have a script tag in the bottom of our HTML. And in here, we're going to need to get all of these items. So we're going to say const get button is equal to document.get element by ID, and that's going to be get. We're going to have the same for a post button, uh, post button. And we're also going to need to get our input. So this one is going to have the input of input, and this is just going to be input. And what we're going to do is assign some functions. So we're going to have two asynchronous functions, and they're going to be, so it's going to be async function, let's just say get info. Uh, and so this function is going to be used to send a request from our front end to our back end. And we're also going to have one for post info. Post info. And so how we want it to work is we want get info to uh, basically, we're going to have two routes here, but we want get info to send back some JSON. And in this JSON, we're going to send a message to display in our input. So we're just going to call this uh, info, and this is going to be uh, preset text and an emoji. Which one? I think we're going to go for the bumblebee. And so when a user requests to this route, we're going to send this package to them from the back end to the front end. <coughs> and the way that that can be received is if we write this get info function, we can just say const response is equal to await fetch and in here you have to give it the URL so we're going to say const base URL is equal to HTTP slash slash you have to give it the local host or the address of the backend so that's the address of the backend I will put a slash and in here we're just going to say fetch base URL uh, and we're going to open that up and just give it a method of get so we can just say, okay, there's a get method here. And what we're going to do after that is just console.log our response and see what we get back. Uh, and so in this particular case, nothing's going to work just yet because the very last thing we have to do is assign these functions to the particular task. And so that's going to be a uh, document, oh, wrong one, dot add event listener. And so we just have to say click. And on click, we want to assign that get info. Uh, but actually, what we want to change this to is just get button. We want to add that event listener to get button. And so when we run this, <coughs> we will see that I forgot to do one thing. So we have to forms by default refresh the page. So we just have to say e event dot prevent default, which will stop the page from refreshing. And um, when we click that, we can see that with console.log this response. And in here, we have some body. And if we look at the request tab, 
the network tab, uh, we can see that here we have our response. Uh, and we actually got back a whole lot of HTML and that's because that is the default send back. And so if we wanted to just change this to info, for example, and change this route here to info, when we run that info request, we can see that we get that preset text. And so what we could actually do after this is say, okay, uh, if we console.log our response, we can just say const data is equal to await res.json that passes any JSON. And we could actually say input.value is equal to data dot whatever we sent it as, which was info. And so now when we run this and do that form, we can see that we collect this information. We have sent information from our backend to our front end system, but it originates with a request from the front end. And so we've set that preset text and every time we click it, it will run that same request. Now we can actually make this slightly more complicated and add some stuff to our request. So we can add two things. And so if I just add some information to the end of this URL, uh, the first thing we can add is a dynamic URL. So let's just say, in this case, we're gonna call it James. On the back end, we receive that by just having uh, dynamic, let's call it. And so that's called a uh, parameter. And you can destructure that by saying const, uh, in this case, it's dynamic is equal to request.params. And so what I can do over here is just console.log dynamic. And now when we refresh the page and run that same thing, that same get request, we get <coughs> nothing back for the second. <coughs> we get nothing back from that request because I have just some invalid syntax here. And so instead, what I'm going to do is actually just uh, add it here as a string. So we're going to add James. And so now when we refresh this page and click get, you can see that we have console we still get the preset text, but now we've received extra information in the form of dynamic. And that dynamic is this dynamic parameter here, which in this case, we appended a James onto the end of our URL. The other thing we can do is add a query. And so you separate parameters from queries using a question mark, and they typically come at the end of URL. And so we could set key is equal to, yeah, key is equal to hello. And so now if we send that, we can receive that over here by saying const key is equal to request.query. And so now we could console.log both of them. And if I refresh that page, we get James, we get the key, and uh, we also send information back from our <coughs> back into our front end. So that's kind of get routes. The other type is post routes. So this is just gonna be posting to the home route. And here we're gonna have request response, open that up. And we're just gonna say uh, request const, uh, let's say, what are we gonna call it? A parcel, because we're gonna post a parcel from the front end to the back end, is equal to request.body. Now, in this particular case, we're going to be sending it via JSON. So you have to type app.use and just let express know that it's going to be expecting JSON. So express.json, just like that. Now, what we're going to do in this particular case is we're just going to send back res.status 200.send. We're also just gonna send a message. Well, actually, we're gonna change it to status and we're just gonna say received, uh, if that all works nicely. <coughs> uh, well, actually, even better, what we could do is just say if, so if parcel doesn't exist, we could send back res.status. We'll return that. Uh, res.status 400 for an incorrect or invalid request. And we'll just say send status failed. <coughs> so now, on our front end, how that works is it's a similar concept here. We're gonna need all the same logic and to take in that event here. 
Uh, we're also going to need to assign an event listener to our post button. So it's going to be post info. And in here, what we're going to do is change this to a post method. Same URL though. Uh, and we are actually, it's going to be a different URL this time. So we're just going to go straight to uh, the home route, which is just localhost 3000. And so you could actually just send, oh no, that's better to do it this way. So that's uh, localhost 8383. And in here, I'm just going to write info. <coughs> so for this, you have to let it know what content type it's going to be expecting. We need to include a second field called headers. And in headers, we say content Need a comma. Content type. And we tell them that we're going to be sending uh, JSON. So you just do application slash JSON files. And then the last thing you include is the body of the request. So that's going to be body. And the body is going to be json.stringify. So we're going to turn our uh, message into JSON. And we're going to have in here the parcel, which is what we're sending. And that is just going to be input.value. So whatever input.value is currently is going to be sent to the back end from the front end. And so in this particular case, I'm just going to say if <coughs> input.value is an empty string, for example. So if it doesn't really exist, or even better, I could just say if input.value is equal to an empty string, we can just return nothing and none of this will work. Otherwise, it will pass that to the back end. And so in here, we can just console.log the parcel and see what we receive. And so if I change this to not preset text and click post, it's obviously not going to work because I still have this content here. So I just need to remove that because we're only just sending to this home URL. <coughs> So if I refresh that page, get the text, change this to not preset text, and click post, we can see that we it was received on the back end and we console.logged it down there. So you can actually get post, get post, post, post. Uh, you can really do whatever you want with this whole system, but that is the basics of communicating between the front end and the back end. Uh, Super simple, pretty straightforward. We just have a basic little example. There's obviously different REST protocols, so you've got put and delete and stuff like that, but they work essentially the same way. Uh, but yeah, I hope you found that useful. If you did, like and subscribe. It super helps the channel. And if there's anything else you want to know or learn, let me know, and I will make that happen. Catch you guys later. Peace.